in the house that we're about to talk. Uh, Mr. President is here. All right. Okay. Coffee Corantin, how are you doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Easy not bad, boy. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Whoa. Yes. I'm happy to see you. Good body. Back. Very back, healthy. Back. Listen, man. We're proud. We're proud of being here. We're proud of you. Uh, we excited, man. Black, mm. I'm telling you, this is a whole different level, man. Mm. Uh, you the man. First, Thank you. Uh, enough, enough respect. Thank you, you so man, much. Thank you so much. You've held it down, uh, regardless of what's coming at you. And I know they're coming at you. They're going to try. They man, do every they time. Yeah, but they can't. They can't touch a good man. You know? That's right. Easy. That's right. Easy. All right, so Kofi, welcome again to the studio. Welcome. You have a good body. Have you been visiting the gym? Uh, Gobe. I don't know if Gobe. you know what Gobe is, man. <laughs> Gobe. Cocoa and bees, man. That's the only thing we're left with. So we got to eat it hard. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. Gotta, Whoa. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. I have to start eating Gobe seriously. Let Do you eat you. it morning, afternoon, evening Listen, now? Just man, um... if I could afford it, man. Wow. Man, man. The way it is now, twice a day. Wow. Once a day sometimes. You just got to up up on the beans. Wow. You know? But, hey, it's the order of the day. Oh, uh, wow. It's tough, man. Wow. It's black. It's tough. It's really tough. All right, so Kofi, tell me, what has your upbringing been like? Where were you born? Mm -hmm. Where exactly and by who? Okay, so I was born at Kolibu. Mm. Uh, my father's name is uh, Oche Krantin, Kwejo Oche Krantin. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother, Elizabeth Kwakwenyanche, she is still in London. Mm. Uh, my father passed away last year. Wow. God bless his heart. Uh, so I went to Agri Memorial International School near the uh, Ghana Broadcasting on Ringway. Mm. Uh, went to University Primary in Cape Coast, mm. Garrison Primary in Kumasi. Uh, and then uh, went to London. Uh, well, actually went to Adisco. Adisco. Uh, then went to London, went to New York where I lived most of my life. And then back to Ghana. Full circle, baby. Wow. Full circle. So you were born in 1966, correct? That's correct. Wow. Yeah. That was the year Nkrumah was overthrown. Uh, yeah. Wow, 1966. Interesting. All right, so what kind of a family were you born into? Were you able to eat three times a day? Was it a good family? Was it a rich family? Uh, we were not rich, I'll mm. tell you, by no standards. Um, uh, my father was a police officer, so he provided for us for the best that he could. Uh, so, yes, we got away with three meals. Scanty as it was, we got away with three meals. Um, and it wasn't. Uh, there wasn't any high notes. It was just an average... Uh, you know, family went to church, went to school, did my chores at home, um, and and that was pretty much it. Uh, I mean, I can't, I won't, I can't tell you. Uh, I didn't had, to, I didn't get a chance to travel outside till maybe when I went to first year at this school. I went outside, uh, and then not soon after, I went to London. So it was an average life. You know, my dad was very disciplined as a police officer. You can imagine, my mother. Uh, was, you know, was a typical mother. Uh, nothing, no high notes. Which you know. area in Ghana was he policing, your father? Uh, he was actually a CID. Uh, when I, by the time I was very conscious of what he was doing, he started MTU in Accra by Tudu. Mm. And then uh, he, he came to CID headquarters on Ringway. Uh, uh, but then uh, he traveled around the country quite a bit. We went to Cape Coast, we went to Kumasi, we went to a couple other small places, small towns and stuff. So, um, like I said, uh, my life was not, I can't say I had any high notes in life. How many siblings? I have three sisters, older sisters. And uh, where are you ranked? Number one, number two, number three? Uh, three older sisters. I'm the last. The last one. The four. Ah. Yeah. My yeah. guest in the studio is Kofi Kurantin. We're going to have a very interesting talk. All right. So he was born right here in Ghana. Which part of Ghana? Accra. Accra. I've lived in Accra, Latibi Okoshi. Ah. Um, so uh, that's where we live. We lived at Airport Res. Uh, but we lived there. I was born at La Salam Down. Where then we moved to uh, Airport Res. Uh, uh, no plush place. It was the flats. Mm. The really broken down flats by Nkrumah that nobody seemed to care about. Mm. That's where we lived. Um, and then uh, we went to... Uh, uh, North Kanishi, then to Latabiokoshi. Right, right. Well, so um, you went to Addis Adisco. Yeah. And then you went to uh, London. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So I'm reading something here that you went to the New York University. Mm -hmm. oh, is that in England or America? No, New York. New York, in America. New York. Yeah. Wow. 
I see. So you went to school in London? Uh, a little bit. Woodbury Downs. Mm. Woodbury Downs in Manor House. Mm. Big up. Yeah. And then you studied economics and business from the New York University. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the New York University. I mean, when you were there, what was it like? Um, uh, well, it's different. <laughs> mm. New York University is very uppity, mm. if you would say. Very, you know, uh, it's a very starchy environment. Um, you know, Wall Street basically controls New York University. I mean, if you go to university, New York University in business or economics, you're going to end up on Wall Street, where I ended up, right? Uh, but uh, the, it's a very solid uh, fraternity. Uh, they control uh, quite a bit of New York in terms of business. Uh, it's a respectable institution. It's not an Ivy League institution, but it's a very respectable because they have a very solid uh, fraternity. Um, so um, it, it was great. New York was in the middle of uh, uh, town, um, uh, East Village. Uh, so you would hang around uh, West 4th, uh, Washington Square, um, and then you would move to Cooper Square on the other side, East, East, uh, East Village. Uh, and then it came into West Village on the West 4th side. So that's that whole section there is New York University. Nightlife was good. The food is good because you were right in the middle of downtown. Um, and it, it, the, the, the culture is great because you get people from all over the world. The mm. Chinese, the, uh, you know, you have a small population of Africans uh, come in there, some Ghanaians in there. But then when I went to college, handful of Ghanaians. But it was a great experience because of how education kind of leveled the playing field mm, for everyone mm, to come in and mm. just uh, push and massage ideas. It was, right. it was an environment for ideas. That's the only thing that was a defining variable. It wasn't about, you know, where you came from or, you know what I'm saying? When you sat in the class and you had a professor in front of you and you were arguing or you were making sense of, a perspective uh, all that mattered was how much you could how much brains you could put on the table that made sense and that's how we I grew up objectivity all which, right of what, course, what, what kind of student were you were you an average student average were you a student, smart student average student average. always wanted to find a way out mm. um I, I, you know and what saved me I'll be very honest uh, you know I, I, I averaged the only reason why I average high uh, 3.67 GDP uh, GPA GDP mm. GPA <laughs> I'm talking G mm. GDP yeah. because of Ghana yeah. I know G I know <laughs> that's funny <laughs> GPA was because mm. I had to meet my requirement to get my scholarship you know the, the I work for JP Morgan Chase um, so if I hit a GPA then I get um, uh, a scholarship so I had to hit a high average to get scholarships so mm. I didn't have to pay through college. So, uh, but I was always thinking outside of the box. Why did this work this way? Why these white kids always seem to get it? And it was basically on a foundation of common sense, black. Just common sense, mm. which we don't seem to be using these days in these governments that we've had for the last 30 years. Right, right. So, for, what is your accent? Is it a British accent, American accent, or a mixture of everything? A yeah, mixture of everything, but definitely not English. It's more American, more American. Ghanaian, influenced American. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what it is. For how long have you lived in America? Over 30 years. 30 years. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I understand that. <laughs> I understand it. Okay. But the Ghana is still in me, black. Yes, yes, yes. Full Ghana, man. Okay. So, so why did you decide to live in America? Like to leave Ghana to forsake your people in Ghana and go live in America? It wasn't my choice. Back mm. when we, I went, it, I was like thirteen, fourteen. Um, it was a choice that my mother made. I oh. thought we, I thought we were going on vacation. I didn't know we were going to stay. And then we go and says, "Here, where's your passport?" Okay, that's it. You're not going back to God. I said, like, what? I got to go wow. back to school. I got to go finish my O level. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah. So what happened to your father? Were they divorced? Um, they were separated, never divorced, separated for the life of me. Mm. You know, so, mm. yeah. Mm. So we left our dad here. We went and later my dad went to London to join my sisters who were in London. Do you know why they were separated? Um, uh, the marriage, marriage stuff. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I never took sides. You know, I always talked to my mother 
when I grew up and asked my mother, you know, but she doesn't want to talk about it because, you know, uh, naturally she's she was hurt. And I still think she's still hurt to this day, as she should be because she wasn't happy with how things happened. Do you yeah. have the details? Um, well, details from my father, but yes. I don't take it from his perspective, mm. you mm. know. But it was a disagreement of, you know, some something basic that they couldn't talk. My dad was much older than my fa my my mother, mm. so it was a, a, just a disagreement of sorts of maybe how things should be done. Something mm. petty, mm. like it usually happens with every marriage. Right. It starts off being petty, and if it's not managed and controlled and 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 truncated, then it metastasizes to a point where you can't do anything. And I think it's one of those. But my, my mother, my mother actually, uh, from what I know, used to call my dad uncle because mm. they kind of like a family is connected, mm. you know. So out of respect, mm. uh, used to call my mother, I used to call my father uncle. Mm. Uncle, wow. Yeah, yeah. and then, uh, you know, they kept it in a family and got married. Mm. Uh, so um, that's what happened. Um, wow. Yeah, so the respect what, was there from the family. Was the marriage violent? No. Not at all. Not. No. All right. No. All right. So I'm going to leave out these personal things and go into you. Kofi Quarantin is my guest in the house. Uh, Wikipedia tells me that he was born on the 9th of September 1966. I was born on in September myself. September 2 yeah, yeah. is my birthday. September borns are always the best, you know. Uh, we know. We yes. know. We know. <laughs> I know everybody's jealous, but come on, don't be jealous, man. It's the way it is. Uh, he went to primary school at Agri Memorial and he continued in Kumasi at Garrison Primary. And then he went for his senior high school right there at Adisadel College, located in Cape Coast. Uh, is it correct? Yeah, I did Okay, okay mm -hmm. so you went to Garrison Primary? Yeah. In Kumasi? Mm -hmm. Ah, and Agri Memorial. Mm -hmm. And then you ended up at New York University, where mm -hmm. you studied economics and business. Mm -hmm. Confirmed. So this is very, very correct. So we leave his education on the side. And then we are going to go into him right now. So you want to be president, Mr. Corantin? I want to serve my people. Big difference. But these are the people you left for 30 years. Are you sure that you can keep uh, with the pace? Do I, you really know what the Ghanaian is going through? I, I absolutely do. Mm. I, I didn't leave them. Mm. Uh, it was a position that my mother took and I had to respect that at the time because I was uh, uh, totally independent. Um, but... Black, it's it's interesting you mm. would start a conversation off like this. Mm. But now, let me say this, though. Mm. Um, when you say, do you know, it's like going to see your doctor. Mm. You live 20 years of your life, all your life. You go into a practice and you meet a person who calls himself a doctor. And he <laughs> says, what is wrong with you? How mm. are you feeling? And he goes through some specific science, Black. And then by the end of the conversation he can pretty much put a finger on what he believes is wrong with you and then he prescribes medication or what the protocol will be to take care of yourself. So you don't have to have lived with your doctor all your life for mm. him to know or mm. for her to know mm. what is wrong with you. Mm. It's the correct analysis of your doctor if they know what they're doing. Mm. Mm. You see, Kofi Kranting is that person who knows uh, has a deep understand of how to analyze a situation to figure out what the problem is right so from that perspective you could solve the problem from the root cause mm. okay i'm actually better than the doctor because mm. the doctor comes in to manage your sickness i come in to truncate to eradicate you know what i'm saying from mm. the root cause mm. Mm. So I, I am here with a different perspective of fixing the problem. If all the people who came before us for the last 30 years knew how to fix the problem, Ghana would not be where it is. We would not be going to IMF 17 times. Mm. If the leadership of a country tells you and wants to come to their people to justify where, why they're going to IMF 17 times, there's something seriously wrong with them. Mm. No question. Mm. Because this is a mathematical disability. Mm. You know, mm. it's a mathematical disability. Mm. Mm. You, you can't add mm. because the factors that brought you to IMF the first time incidentally happens to be the same factors that took you the second, right. the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, to the 17th. True. true. So that's mm. totally inexcusable. Mm. So what it makes this government a Ponzi scheme, it's a grand deception of a group of people who are 
sophisticated criminals who they call themselves a political party. That's what it is. And anybody who thinks less of it, you are not, you, you are not paying attention. You are delusional in your thinking because this is math. You cannot even make an attempt to fix a problem when you have no industry. We have everywhere on the highway we see corn growing. Highway, mm, black. Mm, mm, on the highway, there's mm, corn growing. Mm, 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 mm. On the concrete mm, where there cracks, mm, there's corn growing. Mm, mm. How much more all this land that we have in abundance? That's true. We don't have anything to do with it. Mm. We will milk our resource, gold, diamond, bauxite, lithium, take it to the international commodity market and exchange it for cassava and corn. Mm. There is something seriously wrong with this leadership mm. and mm. nobody could dispute that. If you want to dispute that, you are starting at a deficit of thought. Your mind does not work. Kofi Kwarantin is his name. He wants to be the next president of the Republic of Ghana. Somebody asked me, why are you looking for the high end? Why did you not start off as... Um, Maybe an MP or an assemblyman of Letobi make... or Koshi. You know, yeah. Black, you mm. can't make any impact. The, 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 the constitution of Ghana mm. makes you powerless at every level except for the presidency. And that's one of the reasons why we're coming in to change the constitution. That's correct. That's correct. You see? Yes. So mm. all these people vying to be ministers and parliamentarians they they they're just there to exploit to rape the system they're not there for any impact making mm. how what impact have they made go down the list and tell me one parliamentarian since the fourth republic who has created any impact tell me mm. and i'll go join them mm. you see we have had people come talk like this same way you're talking you know very eloquent they would speak nicely like Nana Kufuado, in fact, he had almost your accent, you know, said the same wonderful things we wanted to hear. And then he came into power and the only difference we see is his bloated stomach. Now, the next thing we see is that we are at the IMF. Now, Kofi, I'm reading something about you that says that you fetch some signatures. I mean, is this not a, a false step? No, it's not. Uh, we did not fake any signatures. I'll tell you what happened. The police said that you did. No, it's not the police who said that. If the police said that, then they would have a record. Mm. because it would be a criminal offense. Mm. Forgery is a criminal offense. Okay. Right? So uh, if I have a criminal clearance report... That okay, says if, if you can hold on a second, I'm going to read this out to you sure. from same Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. It says, on the 19th of October 2020, the Electoral Commission disqualified five candidates, uh, which included Kofi Corantin, on the instances of forged signatures and manufacturing of endorses. The Electoral Commission found out that 29 signatures signed endorsing him, that's you, were fake and had been forwarded to the Police Criminal Investigation Department, CID, for further investigations where your father worked. Now, the Criminal Investigation Department of the Ghana Police Service, CID, after they have further investigations, confirmed that the 29 signatures were fake and hence his disqualification. So, the police... All right. So, first of all, it wasn't mm. five people were disqualified. It was six people. So, mm. that report you're reading is erroneous okay. to start with whoever did it i don't know where they got their facts from and mm. plus it wasn't 29 signatures it was 19 19 okay okay so uh, this is exactly what happened we when you submitting your nomination forms you have to go to every district mm. and at every district you have to get two people who will endorse you that you know what we like with you to be our president for every district so what happened is for uh western north region uh, the Electoral Commission called us on a Friday and said, oh, we have seen some irregularity with your signatures, with your entries. It looks as if somebody else has the same entries, Black, somebody else. Mm. So they say, ah, but we're going to figure it out. And we get a call Saturday. We go in and they say, well, we have CPP here. They're sitting right there. And they, we, they're telling us that the people who filled your application are their people. Mm. So they take a sheet and show us and they say, you see this list? The CPP person, Ivor Greenstreet, says, these are all my people. They're on my list as uh, executive members. Mm. All the nine executive members. Mm. They found their way on our sheet. Out of 46,000 voters registered in the northern, uh, uh, western north region, we could not find anybody except for 19 executives of the CPP. Mm. 
who signed our paperwork, who incidentally happened to be the same people who signed the same document in the same places for the CPP. That's strange, isn't it? Wow. If that were a million mm. dollar ticket, I would have hit it. Mm. Mm. You see? Mm. So obviously we knew right there. Now, to this day, they haven't given us the paperwork. Mm. The paperwork that they apparently said we forged. And let me tell you another thing. My vice president who came, nominee who came to EC to sign his signature, we got a letter from EC saying that he forged his signature. Wow. He came to the EC. Mm. Now, if I were going to forge anybody's signature, will I forge my vice president's signature? That would be strange. Yeah. Mm. They said he, we got a letter saying he forged. Now, uh, Black, mm. one thing. Signatures could be, have some slight variations here and there. You know, but what's strange is to get the same 19 people who signed the same CPP paperwork who are executives, not just regular men, executives, in the same positions, on the document, in the same order, the same name, all the details. Another thing, every entry we got on our paperwork, EC had a text code, 1422. You text it to EC and then you get a response and the response tells you this person, black, uh, this is their name. Uh, this is where they live. This is their voting center. Da, da, da. It gives you all the specs. Mm. And then you verify. We verified every single one of them on our paper. And everything came out correct. Mm. So now if somebody comes and says, well, the person who put their name on your paperwork happened to put their name on somebody else's paperwork. Right. Do you disqualify somebody for that? Wow. What happens is black, which mm. is... Now it's 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 um, uh, 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 regulation with EC. They give you a chance to go and correct. So guess what? Mm. They told us on Saturday that you know what? Go and correct. We s got our people in Western North ready, and they we compiled a set of signatures to bring back to EC. We came back to uh, about ten o'clock on Sunday. We didn't sleep all night. We came back the next day with all the paperwork corrected. Guess what? They said they wouldn't accept it. Why? Only God knows. Did and they give you any reason? They said they wouldn't accept it. But they were the same people who asked you to go correct yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the same people. What do you suspect? Oh, foul play. I mean, come on. They wanted us out. They wanted us out of this race from the beginning because they thought we were a threat. And we were going to cause the, the, the election to go into a, a, a second round. So they, they thought the same people who vote for us would vote for Kufuado and the MPP. Now, Black, isn't it interesting that over 17 million people registered to vote, only 12 million voted? Wow. Five million people almost did not vote. Why? Those people would have voted for you. Those people, I'm not saying 100% of them, mm, but, but a big they were not happy with the people who were on the ballot. Interesting. You see? So this all adds up. And I've had, we've had numerous, hundreds of calls, people saying, if you're not on the ballot, we're not voting. Wow. Did you, you vote? I voted. Who did you vote for? I voted for uh, for president. I voted for uh, C.A.D. Walker for president and for the parliamentaries. I voted for GUM. Wow. Yeah. You didn't vote for NPP. You didn't vote for NDC. Oh, absolutely not. Mm. I won't touch them for a billion dollars. Mm. 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 You consider them criminals, right? They are. I don't consider criminal. them criminals. Mm. Mm. I, how can I? I don't have the. I, how can I consider them criminals? Mm. What they do is what makes them who they are. Mm. So by virtue of their deeds, yeah. guess what? Mm. They are criminals. Mm. 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 Do you think that Ivor Green Street was used against you? Because I wouldn't know. I have no proof to think that. But one day we will find out. How's have you that? Have you spoken with him? No, I haven't. Have you spoken with the 19 people who, I mean, allegedly signed for the two parties? They didn't give us a chance to get the name, so we don't know exactly. Uh, we, we, can't, we don't have the guarantee to go to them. We, they didn't give us the paperwork. To this day, mm. the Electoral Commission has a law that you bring us three copies, we verify all of your four copies, mm. and we'll give you one back. Mm. To this day, we don't have our copy. Mm. Mm. We never got our copy back. But I tell you what, they called us and said, hey, listen, we've done with our investigation. You could come and get your check for 100,000 cities. Yes, the report said it was returned to you. But why would you report to something to me if I'm a criminal? Mm. I'm a criminal. I forged signatures. Were you arrested? No. I went to the police station. We got a clean 
criminal clearance report. You know what the police say? Mm. Ah, get out of here. They don't know what they're doing. They do it all the time. That's what the police said. That's what the police told me. The police said the electoral commission. They do it all the time. And they don't know what they're doing. No. Interesting. Which police station? CID. That's where I got my criminal clearance report. CID. Yeah. Do you know who exactly said this so we can put the person on the line? Um, I, do, I cannot. Uh, it would, I would just have to go to the person who issued my uh, certificate of cr criminal clearance. Mm, mm. But there was no report, Black, and I totally believe them too because there was no report filed. I have a clean criminal record. So no. if I was hit with forgery, we went to court. We, we went to court. We hired attorneys. We went to court. They dismissed the case that, oh, um, we didn't have enough proof and blah, blah, blah. They dismissed the case. Yes, yes, yes. The report said it was uh, dismissed. Mm -hmm. Were you satisfied with that? Absolutely not. We had to be on the ballot. We did. Listen, Black, we did not sleep. He was there. We ate pizza and uh, 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 fried yam and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Madviti's cookies. We stayed night after night. We made sure I am. Listen, Black, if you don't know me, I am anal when it comes to getting my stuff done right mm, mm. i you know if you talk about anybody who's attention to detail i worked on wall street i'm a principal for the federal government i've been a principal for the federal government for over 20 years so i know what detail is you got to get your t's cross your eyes dotted to i've i've worked as a federal you know as a principal for over 20 years i didn't get one violation or mm. one write up one mm. not mm. one mm. 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 coffee tell me this tell me this um um do you have an american passport have you had, had. one before had you had one before i had to turn it in to be able to run ah i had to renounce my citizenship oh you did I, of course you can't you can't listen this is not a game black mm. this is our lives depend on this thing mm. we had to go in and turn in america they looked at me and said are you crazy I mm. said, no, I'm not crazy. I just want to serve my people. I said, no, no, no. You don't understand what you're doing. I said, I know. I, I understand what I'm doing. They, they told me to go back home and go think, go see a counselor. I came back. They had me sit in front of the counselor. They interviewed me to make sure that my mind was right, that I, I had to be sick turning in my American passport. My God have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. So you gave up your American passport? I gave up my citizenship. How much, how much does it hurt you? It doesn't. Because I don't look at what I'm leaving. I look at what we are getting. Wow. I'm going to put Ivor Green Street on the line. What are you going to ask him? I don't have anything to ask him. Mm. I don't have anything to... He was there. He sat right next to me. And he was the one who said, these are the people on my list. And so they are our people. So they cannot be on your people. He said that. You could ask him. Hmm. And they believe that they were his people. Now, tell me. I mean, if two people are fighting for a certain something, there has to be a proof that that thing belongs to this person or that person. How did they believe that you were the one who fought th those names and not Ivo Green Street? For well, CPP? first of all, mm. uh, Black, mm. first of all, let's establish something. Mm. You cannot own the people who endorse you to be run for the country. You nobody has ownership to them. Mm. So it can if I, I have a choice as a citizen of the country to say I want to vote for I want to vote for black or I want black to represent me. Just as much as I should have the right to go and say I I, I want to vouch for a thousand other people. You can vouch for them. This is vouching. Mm. Why can you not vote for more than one person? Where does it say that in the world? They were in the world. Did you bribe these people? Absolutely not. Would you bribe your way to the president? Absolutely not. That's what we want to fight. That's what we're here to fight. Have you paid a bribe to anybody to help you in your political journey in Ghana yet? Oh, absolutely not. What we do is we have people. Uh, he's on payroll. He's mm. helping me. Mm. He's on payroll. Mm. Mm. So you are employing people. Of course. On your journey to the presidency. Absolutely. What did the American passport mean to you? And what does it mean to you now? Well, it can't mean anything to me. I don't have it. Mm. You can't, something can't have uh, uh, you know, relevance in your life when you don't have it. Can you go back for it? No. It's a one, listen, it's a one-way street. Once you lose it, you lost it forever. 
you can never get it back. Never, never get it back. And you were ready to take that decision? Absolutely. For my country, yes. Absolutely. Everybody said I was crazy. People called me and said, listen, people called my wife and said, listen, this guy is crazy. You got to divorce him. You, you don't understand. I had to leave my business. My pension is gone. Everything. I had to do it for my country. You see, because this is exactly what they do to threaten you so that you will, in your right mind, never let your passport go. Especially who, who wants to let their, uh, what, all the, everybody in the uh, youth in Ghana wants to fight to go to America. Mm. You get a passport, mm. you live a life mm. in America, mm. right? Mm. I'm not the richest, but everything I want in America, I got to experience, right? And it gives you access to pretty much everywhere in the world that you want to go. Mm. You go with American Export, doors are open for you. Mm. And you have to, they have to snuff that from you one time. Mm. You mm. let everything go, your life, everything. Is the presidency a make or break situation for you? Mentally, it is. You, uh, uh, because you see what? Black, let me tell you this. Mm. At 400 billion cities of debt, mm. with 3 million graduates out unemployed, no industry, 84% debt to GDP, 84% uh, uh, debt to GDP. We don't have any industries. We uh, import in corn mm. and cassava. Look at our roads. Look at the filth. We dying out of mosquitoes are killing us. Look at our roads. Accra Kumasi, every day there's an accident killing us. Who is going to, the big question is, Black, who is going to save this nation? Not these clowns, not these criminals. If they had an idea, they would have done it in the last 30 years. Mm. So who's going to do it? That's what I want to know. If you show me who's going to do it, it's over. It's over. I'll go to Togo, mm. Burkina Faso, and plant some onions and sell to Ghana. So now if you're going back to America, what do you do? Do you go for a visa? You have to. So you get a visa to go to America? I have to go p p do a travel arrangement, a special travel arrangement to get me to go. Oh, but that's not necessarily a visa. Or you, you still have your residential status. No, no, no. You can't. You lose. Uh, no, Black, you don't understand. You lose everything. Mm. Everything. Wow. Everything. That's like a big gamble. It is. Mm. You lose everything. But this country and the youth mm. are worth it. Mm. And I don't have one regret. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I'll be mm. honest with you. Look at me. Do I look like I have any regrets? Uh, no, no, not at all. Do, do, what do you think about dual citizenship? I fought it. Mm. I fought it. Mm. That's why I fought for representation of the People's Amendment Act. Mm. And I won the case in court mm. against the Electoral Commission. Mm. Guess what? Mm. They never implemented it. Interesting. Ah, interesting. Isn't that interesting? Mm. So this was a chance for the EC to get me back because I got them. Mm. How did you get them? Tell me I more. got them because I won a case against them because they never wanted to uh, uh, implement representation of the People's Amendment Act right, to get right. Ghanaians abroad mm -hmm. to be able to vote. Yes. If, if Ghanaians abroad bring six to eight billion dollars into this country, no country black will give Ghana six to eight billion dollars a year. Mm. We bring it in every year mm -hmm. and we are asking you to let us vote. Let us be part of the process mm -hmm. because black, what mm -hmm. you need to understand is Ghana does not have a middle class. That's right. That's if true. you don't have a middle class, you can't build this country. Mm -hmm. There is no way we could take care of this 400 billion cities of debt. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever told us how we're going to take care of the $400 billion of debt. It's because we don't have a middle class. Mm -hmm. You don't have a middle class, you cannot create the economic combustion to eat up the debt. Mm -hmm. So the best way is to allow for your middle class who is abroad to come in and establish businesses because they give you 6 to $8 billion every year tax-free. You won't let them. Come on. Mm. There's something wrong with you. Mm, mm, Are mm. you kidding me? Mm, mm, mm. I heard about Ropa and I heard how instrumental you were. Would you say that you were the main I was the CEO board? of the... Uh, yes, we organized. I sat down with Samson Ladi mm. uh, and we went... I, we neg I negotiated the deal, da-da-da-da-da, and Samson took on the case. I came here and met with Samson. And you Before won. Before that, I won. I sat with a lot of attorneys. Anytime they found it was Ropa, guess what? They jump ship. They mm. don't want to touch it because mm. Ropa was toxic. And I appreciate Samson Ladi for taking us through. Wow. You know? So, we now, to... so now Ghanaians abroad can vote. No, they can't vote. Don't you understand, Black? Mm. The government never implemented it. Even though you won. 
we won the case interesting and they gave um, uh, what's called the order of mandamus mm. order of mandamus is telling the electoral commissioners mm. that you don't have a right if you do not implement this this is an obstruction of justice and they still did not implement they still it. did not implement it because of the kufuado and mahama is it that they don't respect the courts or they just don't have any respect only for you Ghanaian can tell Sabrat? me only you could tell me because it's beyond my comprehension that the court will give you an order and guess what they went to court and filed for an extension mm. because uh charlotte to say changed over to gene menser and they went and said oh well listen we haven't really gotten this thing down we need time to and they got an extension for a year and when the year came they went back and said hey you got the good old almighty corona mm. so with corona guess what i guess we all on an permanent break okay all right okay i'm going to ask you a question that everybody would ask you okay what are you going to be doing differently from what has been going on for the past how many years ghana has been in existence boy as boy. the president so mm. number one mm. we're going to shrink government okay okay we're going to cut down the 275 parliamentarians to 20 20 two, Two per region. We're going to scale down ten reg uh, the sixteen regions back to ten, because oh. it's resources they after, not expansion. Mm. This is a needless expansion that costs us money. Mm. Okay, uh, the ministers we're going to reduce to twenty. One minister, one deputy. We're going to have ten ministries. Ten, just ten ministries. All the ministries are going to be in one building, not scattered around Ghana, wasting space, and develop that real estate for other production we're going to invest 10 billion dollars into agriculture what every year ministries are you going to cut off well let me tell what ministries we're going to keep mm. okay agriculture okay energy mm. um uh, uh employment and entrepreneurial development mm. Mm. education mm. finance mm. foreign affairs mm. ministry of trade mm. industry ministry of health mm. trade uh, uh uh foreign affairs yes Ten. Foreign affairs, you mentioned that twice, but that's okay. No, no, no. Yes. Mm. Okay, so let's yeah. do it again. Okay. Uh, Ministry of Justice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess Justice. Mi okay, Minister, Minister of, of Justice. Justice. All right. So, Minister of Justice is in there. Yeah. So, a number of them are going to be cut off, like the Ministry of Social Welfare, Women, Gender. It's we'll not going to be cut off. It's going to be scaled to an agency. Okay. And the agency is going to work just like a ministry. See, the real reason why they bumped it up to ministries is so that they could have the perks. Mm. You know, one SUV for me, two SUVs for my deputy, and then they have offices. And no, we want to make it tight, mm. run a tight government effectiveness. You are going to cut out the Ministry of Sports too. And no, we're not cutting it again. We're not it's cutting anything out. Again. It's going to be an agency. Mm. We're just going to increase its effectiveness because ultimately it's the results that people want, not just stuff. Mm. You know, this government is about big, bigness doesn't give you result. Mm, mm, mm. Effectiveness is what gives you results. Yeah, yeah, and true. we are going to be effectiveness focused. Okay. All right. Okay. So what will be the difference between the ministry and the agency? Ministers. Mm. Cost. Mm. It's going to cut costs. Okay. You're going to have, you could have a small place like this functioning as the old ministry into an agency. Mm. Again, it's a result. That's why we're going to put all the 10 ministries in one building. Mm. You see, so we're going to focus on effectiveness. Mm. Mm. You see, we have 55 diplomatic missions around the world mm. what do they do for ghana they each cost us over a hundred thousand dollars every month hundred thousand dollars dollars a month a month wow why do you keep them the purpose of a the diplomatic mission is to negotiate for trade do these guys you see to them to be bringing in any trade to ghana That's wow exactly that's why we're going to cut. We're going to only have five. One hundred thousand dollars. Absolutely. Go to New York and find out how much that the offices there, the rental, the cars they drive. They don't drive anything more than two years old. And we have each one in every country. Not every country. We have 55 of them. 55? 55, including Burkina Faso. Mm, mm, Tell okay. me what we're doing in Burkina Faso. Um, Maybe to negotiate to bring in some cows from Burkina Faso. There you and go. They, no, we sheep. negotiated to bring in donkeys mm. and they come and they take uh, fertilizer across the border. I know what you mean. To, yeah, according to the I know agriculture what you minister. Mean. Mm. Come on, what a joke. Mm. We're going to cut all that nonsense. So we're going to shave down 
and we're going to invest into agriculture. And the agriculture, the output of the agriculture we're going to put to industry. The agro-based industries are going to expand to absorb the high unemployment in our youth. You don't seem to like Baumia. You said he should resign. Uh, is he your worst? politician in Ghana. Wait, first of all, mm. why would anybody, a person who has come and lied to us mm. about everything the NDC and Muhammad did, right? Mm. And then the guy comes and performs worse than them. Mm. And you want to keep him? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's the mm. way the guy laughs. Even the way he laughs is nauseating. Okay. All right. Well, I'm told that I have um, Ivor Green Street on the line. Sure. I'm going to try to talk to him. Um, all right. All right. Um... Which line is this? Which line is he going to be on? Let me see. Is Ivor still on the line? Ivor, are you still on the line? Hi, good afternoon to you, Ivor Green Street. Good afternoon to you, Ivor. Ivor, are you on? Oh, we lost him. Hallelujah. All right. We lost him. We lost him. We're going to try and get him again. We're going to try and get him again and we'll talk to him. You know, we like to talk. Uh, I mean, the whole circumference, 360. All right. So we're going to find out from Ivor Green Street exactly, you know, what happened. And if, well, let me hold the questions. When he comes on, we will talk to him. Don't worry about it. All right. So you were talking about what you'll be doing differently. Yes. All right, you're going to be cutting down some um, ministries. That's correct. And then, then you, you change them into agencies. That's correct. And then what we're going to do, which is major, is we're going to change the constitution. Mm. Okay, we're going to change the constitution, mm -hmm. uh, uh, no nonsense constitution. We're going mm. to plug all the leaks. The leaks are what is killing Ghana right now. We're losing so much money because. The, constitution has too many leaks oh okay, okay. and you then, are talking about the leakages yeah all right and then mm. also we're gonna go to near zero corruption you can eradicate corruption totally but what you can do is you could cut corruption down how we're going to deal with corruption is we're going to go deal corruption at the administrative level that's the only way we're going to be able to take care of corruption mm -hmm. you got to deal with it at the administrative level the criminal level and also psychological level okay hold on a bit man i'm coming forward to you again Ivor, good afternoon to you. How are you doing? Black or oh, black? Yes, Ivor Green Street. How are you doing? I'm fine, my brother. It's been a long time. I think I need to find my way to your house and eat some vegetable soup. Ah, 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 <laughs> are you still close by? I what? think you've left your, your office that was close by. Yes, by yes, but I can always find my way there. No two ways you're, about you're that. always on the move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Ivor, I have an interesting gentleman in the house who is looking uh -huh. forward to becoming the next president of the Republic of Ghana. You might have encountered this interesting gentleman. His name is Kofi Kurantin. And in the last elections, he said the people who endorsed him, in fact, 19 of them that came into a certain contention were the same people who were supposed to be the executives of the CPP that you were leading, true? Uh, well, depending on what context you're asking that question, uh, these are matters which came before the Electoral Commission at that time. Right. So, and I know that the Electoral Commission... Uh, did did uh, write a report mm. about uh, um, uh, what occurred uh, during the nomination process in the last election mm. and uh, um, uh, why some parties and persons were qualified and why others were disqualified. Mm. But it, it's not unusual in uh, in an electoral process uh, to find that uh, some individuals at the local level mm. uh, mistakenly endorse more than one person. Mm. Mm. Uh, primarily because they don't understand that the law only allows them to endorse one form. Okay. Now, now, Ivor, the interesting thing is that he had a number of people who endorsed him. The only people in contention were the 19 people on your endorsement sheet, the CPP. Well, as I said, I mean, these matters would have been formed in the, in the report that the EC would have made at that time, uh, post the election. And uh, there may have been some other problems in other regions, and I don't know what other candidates or other parties' uh, problems were. Mm. Well, um, these people were supposed to be executives of your party. Do you think that they were losing interest in your party and wanted to jump ship onto Kofi Kurantin's party? 
Well, certainly not. I think they had no interest in him whatsoever. Perhaps if they signed his forms, it would have been mistakenly having signed them. I don't think they signed it because um, uh, of any specific issue concerning the party. As why would they have endorsed two forms? Then they wouldn't have even endorsed the CPP's forms at all. So if that is in fact the case, and the, the EC confirms that to be the case, then uh, perhaps it was uh, an erroneous mistake uh, that occurred at that point in time. But I don't think forms were completed based on um, uh, a perspective of supporting one person or another. All right. I think they, they were filled in, in a bureaucratic and, and from an administrative perspective, not a political support perspective. I understand. I understand. Now, you have met Kofi Korantin. Do you think he's a presidential material? Do you think he would be the next president? I think we have many uh, individuals uh, in, in the country who who believe in Ghana and who believe Ghana has uh, a lot of problems and who believe Ghana needs uh, a different kind of leadership uh, to take uh, this, our wealthy nation, uh, to the promised land. A country with oil, gold, gas, cocoa, timber, diamonds, bauxite, manganese, fertile lands, access to water resources, which have been offered so many um, uh, platforms of hope on previous occasions by the two largest parties which have ruled us uh, since the inception of the Fourth Republic in 1992, but mm. who um, uh, have allowed us to wallow in uh, the kind of situation that the nation finds itself up with unemployment uh, amongst the youth and lack of hope and opportunity for the people. Definitely there will be many people who feel they have the capacity uh, to change the fortunes of the nation and steer this country in a better direction. Mm. He may be one of them who also feels he has that capacity, as perhaps others do as well. Do you still have presidential ambitions, Mr. Greenstreet? Well, I, I think what, what is clear to me is that during the last uh, campaign, uh, the Convention People's Party, uh, because of the delays that are taking place um, with the, the inception of COVID and the other problems uh, that occurred, sent one specific message to Ghanaians. Uh, and, and they did it in the form of a metaphor or in the form of, let's say, a pantomime to, to indicate to Ghanaians clearly what they shouldn't do. And that was to give the National Democratic Congress and the New Patriotic Party an electric shock. <laughs> and clearly it has come home to roost. If you look at the economic situation the country itself finds itself in with all the promises of this ruling government, it is obvious to all Ghanaians that they should never have even bothered to consider voting for them at all. And the question is whether in voting for them, if they are disappointed and recognize that they have totally failed, which they have, where else do you go? Do you go back to the other largest opposition party? What do they have to offer? What would they even come and do differently? Mm. So clearly the answer lies not there, and it lies elsewhere. And so there are those who if they have the capacity and the experience, uh, the intelligence and the capacity to build a team and lead this nation mm. into a better direction, at least the first point of call is not whether it is Green Street or Coranting or whoever it is. The first point of call is for people of Ghana to recognize that it is not the NPP and it is not the NDC. And observe mm. for the light to appear in the right direction. Okay. So, Mr. Green Street, do you still have presidential ambitions? I think I just answered that question. No, you didn't. You didn't say whether you... There, there, there's no such thing as a yes or no answer. Okay. I think when your colleague called me, mm. she indicated mm. that the purpose was to uh, try and clarify okay. some issues All right. concerning All right. what happened to okay. Mr. Karantse okay. that had led to his disqualification All right. I in get the it. previous campaign. And it was on that basis mm. that I said I would indicate um, uh, uh, my contribution. However... If on a future um, occasion, Black, mm. you want to have a personal discussion with me, mm. not as an aside mm. from a central theme in a the conversation, All right. I'm ever willing to come to your studio and explain whether I have ambition or not, and if I do have ambition, what form it takes. All right. I'm ever willing to come and make myself available in your studio to do that. Thank you so much. I mean, I appreciate this. We'll certainly invite you over and we'll have a beautiful conversation. Black or black? Yes, Mr. Green Street. Thank you so Bye -bye. much for talking to us. Bye. All right, so Mr. Corantin, you heard Mr. Green Street live on Khaled. And, um, well, I think he likes you. <laughs> he doesn't seem to like the NDC and the NPP as well. And he's saying that, well, I mean, well, nobody should vote them back again.
Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyway, you're talking about what to be doing differently. Yeah. Just so, two more, and then we'll right. be so, over. Uh, mm. uh, thank you for the opportunity again, uh, mm. Black. Uh, mm. Like I said, mm. and, and see, we have to develop a no nonsense approach to corruption. Right. Our administration, we're going to have a capital punishment mm. if you cause financial loss to the state. Wow. No, uh, yeah. Capital and, punishment uh, in what form? Death? Well, uh, it's for the people of Ghana to decide. You are going to bring back the death sentence? It's for the people of Ghana to decide. What do you think? I, I, I want to sound like Green Street right now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. You didn't call me to come here to talk about my capital punishment. If that, fire, uh, fire, Lawrence should have told me that we're going to talk about. It. So you know. So anyhow. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. I know, but I but know. but the truth is, yeah. Ghanaian people, because you know. When you talk about capital punishment, the mm. honest truth is people cringe. Mm. In a Christian nation, in a Muslim nation, people don't like that. Mm. But we have to find a way to have a zero tolerance to corruption. Okay, So in our administration, we are going to prosecute almost instantaneously once it's justified that uh, you are undeniably the culprit. We will, we, 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 there will be consequence almost immediately mm. okay now the level of the consequence is what has not been established because a lot of Ghanaians are writing to me sending me posts and say oh they don't want the death penalty Ghana you're pesticide not you know so you know I, I I came to serve my people so I know corruption is a huge huge problem we have to find a way to pull a nail in that coffin mm. and I want our people our people in Ghana to be um, uh, uh, to to kind of exercise some type of uh, in terms of dealing with the facts. Right. If we don't go heavy on this corruption thing, it's going to kill us. It's the reason why and the MPP spent seventy seven billion dollars in the last six years, and nobody can point to it where it's gone. Yeah. Seventy seven yeah. billion. Mm, mm. Point five. Thank you. Mm, you that's see? crazy. It's crazy. So we, we cannot have a nonchalant uh, attitude that, oh, you know, we're going to um, uh, punish me. No, 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 okay. no, no. All right. So that's the All right. attitude. All right. Kofi Kurantin is my guest. He wants to be the president of Ghana. I want to serve my people. In the next elections. And he would only serve the people of Ghana when he is president. He thinks that's when he can make the best efforts, right? Correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So now, Mr. Corantin, um, you were raised a Christian, right? That's correct. Are you still a Christian? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. So you speak in tongues? No. Oh, why? I'm 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 spiritual. Mm. I go to church, mm. but I'm spiritual. Mm. So I believe that the body has different dimensions and I communicate on that level mm. of providence. Mm. Um, but uh, you don't need to speak in, in, in case you want it to be, you don't need to speak in tongues. Oh, you don't need to. To okay. communicate with your maker. But do you believe in tongues? Um, I haven't really had the exposure to be able to speak on that. Come on, you're bringing me, you're okay. bringing out my Ivor Green Street. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, I know. Fire, fire, fire. All right, fire, so I asked you this because fire. I was going to touch on another very, very raw nerve. What do you think about the National Cathedral? Oh, come on, that's you, not raw nerve. Yes, yeah, so that's you, common sense. Okay. You don't on. have food to feed your kids. Right. You know, your kids are sitting under leaking classrooms remember christians are listening to you oh of course they're listening Your christian to me. voters now, now, now listen to, to me listen, mm -hmm. i didn't say the national cathedral was irrelevant mm -hmm. i'm saying that when you the same christian children and adults uh, ch children are sitting under trees don't have food to eat i think it would be prudent to suspend that till those critical things are in order there is something called priority you see, when you don't do things in a pri it, it, when you don't prioritize things right. as a human being, right. mm. you lose value as a human being mm. because that's what the, 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 the defines us as humans. That's true. You see, mm. so what I'm saying is, is we could have built the cathedral on the Dodowa stretch, oh, Dodowa or stretch. on the Winneba Accra Cape Coast, or somewhere, mm. right? But you didn't have to crush, mm -hmm. demolish. Uh, buildings uh, that are six hundred thousand dollars each, mm. the, the buildings for the judges, mm. and build a whole that whole strip 
just to put a cathedral up when the monies that were used to build that properties that strip was borrowed you haven't even finished paying for it yet right you but yeah you demolish it mm. you mm. see mm. so listen yesterday we were with uh, a pastor a senior pastor mm. in wager right all right and he said he totally disagreed with the cathedral so I have pastors that I speak to who are in disagreement with the cathedral. The time and the place is not right. So when when is it going to be ripe to build a cathedral? When the most basic of your needs are met. Which which ones are these? When you don't have corruption, mm. when your children have food to eat, when planting is not five cities planting, I, I I'm I have a very personal relationship with planting because of my gobe, right? Mm. When planters are not five cities a pop. One planting is not five cities. When our roads are fixed and all the necessary things are in order, of course we can build. And plus, there is an abundance of churches everywhere. We can all go to places for worship, right or right. You can sit in your room and pray. You could go to the church you're affiliated with and, 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 and have a relationship there with your pastor and all the people there and help the church. There is an abundance of churches that if you want to help, you can help. You don't need another church. Mm -hmm. Well, what your Christian friends say is that there was a woman in the Bible who came to pour some very, very expensive perfume mm -hmm. on the feet of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And his disciples were, oh, wow, why would she do this? This is too expensive. She should have sold it to feed the poor. Mm. And Jesus Christ said, the poor would continue to be here long after I've come and gone. Absolutely. So corruption will still be here. Absolutely. It will poor be people here. will still be here. Uh -huh. Would you be able to find time to build this cathedral ever if you were to go by this Bible story? But well, it's not one of my priorities. Okay. I I'll, like I'll that. be very honest with you. I like cathedral that. is fire, not one fire, of my priorities. Fire, 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 okay. Coffee Corantin Cathedral is not one of my priorities. Headlines tomorrow all over the place. Another headline that is going to be coming up is NDC and PP are institutionalized criminals. And I'm already seeing it all over the place. Now, tell me, you have lived in a country that has legalized homosexuality mm -hmm. for 30 solid years. Mm -hmm. uh, is it one of your priorities? My priority is to serve the citizen. Good. What the citizen chooses to do with their life is totally up to them. Oh, okay. You see, I, I'm not here to tell you do this or do that. I'm here to create an environment for people to thrive. Do you think it matters, homosexuality? Does it matter? Does it, is, it something that would, uh, is it something that should be considered? Considered as what? I mean, considered in the country. As what? No, I'm totally in, I mean, in disagreement okay. with homosexuality. Oh, you are? Oh, of course I am. Oh, really? Okay, so w listen, the people of Ghana mm. is who sets the tone as okay. far as that is concerned. Mm. When the people are ready, it would be relevant. Right now, the people don't want it. I'm here to serve the people. If the people don't want it, I don't care what anybody else says, the people don't want it. I'm going to ask you another thing. Sure. Coffee quarantine wants to be president of this country i wants want to, to see him. my people yes i want to see him. anytime i say he wants to be president he says i want to serve my people as the president interesting mr corantin tell me this okay so uh right now how are you going to be able to raise money so you run away from loans or you are also going to continue in the loan spree okay so right now black mm. less than 30 percent pay taxes mm. when we do institute a national address system national develop uh, integrated national id and address system what it does is then every Ghanaian gets counted and by default the tax net gets expanded mm. see right now black let me tell you um 80 percent of all employment in ghana stems from the micro small and medium enterprises 90 percent of that is in the informal sector Baumia makes a lot of noise about digitization, digitization. It would have served us as a people if his prime objective was to move people from the informal to the formal so that they, we could count them and expand the voter net to include them so that we could take something back from them and help develop the country with. Simple thing. But no, he's busy doing... <laughs> doing some stuff right. something else mm. okay so what we will do is number one we're gonna expand the voter net number two 
accountant general's office, not by my words, not by my numbers, says... You're, you're talking about a tax net, right? No, no, no. That's number one. Mm. Number two mm. is, how much money did we lose in 2021, for, according to the accountant general's uh, numbers? I was just trying to clarify that. You said voter net, and I said, is it tax net you wanted to say? Y well, of course, that's tax the same net. Thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. good. Tax okay. Mm. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Voter. Yeah, net? Voters. Oh, okay, okay. I'm you sorry. are more so, interested in the voters, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, no, no. Oh, okay. I didn't <laughs> slip my yeah, mind. But right. you, yes, you have it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. tax net. That's mm. it. So the second thing is black. Uh, mm. The um, seventeen over seventeen million CDs has been lost in 2021 mm. due to corruption. 17 million Ghana 17 cities. 17 million yeah Ghana according cities. to the accountant general's numbers mm. when you plug the leaks that i was talking about all this money now stays in the in our pool okay for cash outlay and that can go towards uh, an incredible amount of uh, uh, uh development yes yes that the 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 ports are losing so much money we mm. have to renegotiate to get our ports back ndc and the mahama sold Gan uh, Tamahabo to Vincent Bellori. Wow. 70% of Tamahabo is owned by the French billionaire. As it stands right now? As it stands. Go on Google right now and you will see it. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm telling you that. When, so 70% of Tamahabo has been sold? Yeah, go. go. Vincent Bellori. Check it out right now. You'll be blown away. When MPP came, they renegotiated that and made it a no position for election. So NDC and MPP agreed that, oh, you know what? When it comes to Tamahaba, we're not going to talk about this Vincent Bellori deal. And they moved the NDC people out and they replaced the NDC people, MPP people who are now enjoying the benefits of this transaction. Nobody knows, but we don't know. So we're going to renegotiate that to take back Tamahaba. And we're going to recon reconstitute the whole of Tamahaba so that we all every penny coming into Habo, aside from it uh, doing a flat rate, uh, import duty on uh, everything that's coming in, we're going to control uh, harbors back again. And that income, nobody talks about Tamahabo. It's the biggest chunk of loss in Ghana. That which goes on in Tamahabo. If you know anybody who works in the harbor, they'll tell you. Nobody mm. even talks about it because it's out of control. You see? So when you take money from there, take money from what we would get as revenues from taxes, mm. and then we plug the leaks in corruption, you have more than 20, 30 billion... First of all, we make about 50 billion CDs every year. Mm. 50 billion. What do we do with it? Mm. Tell me. We don't, I don't see anything happening. They don't do... They, have you seen any development that I've looks seen, like... I've seen some interchanges around. Oh, that... And I've it, also seen the, some no, roads the, being built. Yeah, they, mm. they all used all the, uh, uh, the uh, loans. They borrowed to do that. That was the justification for the borrowing. Mm. When you don't have any income, you build interchanges. Mm. Really? Mm. You, you mm. have to justify income first mm. before you go on to do projects that don't bring income. We don't understand that math. This is common sense. Are you sure it doesn't bring income? We have the road tolls that, uh, you know, people riding on the roads pay no. money. and. So, first of all, you have to establish your income generators. Mm. So that's the first thing any government wants to do. See, this is why. So how then do we have, if your justification is road tolls, mm. why do we have $400 billion of debt? Mm. Mm. 400 billion cities, I'm sorry. 400 billion cities of debt. Mm. Obviously, they did not do the math right, right? So what I'm saying is this. Whatever monies we have now, it has to go into agriculture. Agriculture is not just the hoe and the cutlass agriculture because we're going to be using drone mechanized farming mega machines and then agriculture has uh, medicine uh, has uh, uh, transportation mm. has research and development has engineering uh, has mechanics has freight transportation it has so me it has uh, 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 so many different sectors in agriculture and then we're going to use that to absorb and bring incomes up you see uh, once people's lives change and quality of life goes up, then th we start building gradually the middle class. Right now, we don't have a middle class. Would you accept any ministerial position from um, the current government? Absolutely not. See, the head is what the problem is, not the tail.
No, you could change the tail many times. If the head is rotten, it's rotten. You see? What is the tradition of your party? Your party is called a progressive what, what, what? No, 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 no. It's New Vision Movement. New Vision Movement. But so Pro what is this progressive Progressive something? Alliance Movement was the organization that took Electoral Commission to oh, court. Oh, Europa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what is the tradition of your party? I mean, this party, this NPP party says it's Buzia Dankwa, now Buzia Dankwa, Dombo party. And then the CPP says, oh, Nkrumah. Which one is your tradition? serve the people of ghana make prudent decisions so we can have a decent life what do you think about Nkrumah? are you an Nkrumahist? absolutely i love Nkrumah. i can't compare myself to him but we have learned from the things that he did i think it would be an insult for me to even begin to compare myself to Nkrumah. but i have studied him i have learned a lot from him and we use we want to revive his vision what do you think about jj rollins i i think he came in at the wrong time mm. um i think he was not prepared mm. um and that's what uh, you know you see my, my attitude is you can't do a good thing in a bad way and i think he attempted to do a good thing but because he was not prepared himself uh people took advantage of what he did when he came in you know, a lot of people will say, oh, we, at this time, we need somebody like J.J. to come. But we don't need somebody like J.J. You don't need somebody to just come bulldoze the house down. You need somebody who has mathematical exactitude, surgical precision mm. in t dealing with this problem. Mm. Not just to bulldoze it down, mm. because that's just one problem. Who's going to build it up? Talking about bulldozing and excavating, tell me. Would mining form a big part of or any part of your revenue? You mentioned, you know, I'm going to block leakages. I am going to be able to do this. You didn't talk about mining. No, Does it didn't. matter to you? It matters to us. Incredibly. Really? Absolutely. But for now, what we're going to do is we want to lift off on mining. Okay? Because it's spoiling the land. We have to preserve Go back to preservation of our lands and mm -hmm. water bodies, mm -hmm. okay, and get a hold on that before we can institute incredibly critical, definitive measures for if we're going to have mining companies come in or we are going to involve in mining mm -hmm. or go in partnership with mining, mm -hmm. start a process. Mm -hmm. It's not regulated now. Everybody comes in and starts digging. And they, it's been a menace. Yeah. And they've destroyed the land. Mm. And they've polluted the waters. And you have, uh, uh, I mean, listen, Black, this is a serious situation. We went up Pra. Mm -hmm. There were places we went where uh, goats and pigs were getting seizures. Mm. You know why? Mm. Because of the levels of toxicity in the water. Mm. And now our mothers are starting to consume it. Our women are consuming it. Mm. And they're giving birth to irregular babies. This means that they are sucking out our uh, human capital. Mm -hmm. All the babies there could have been black and could have been all the good people of this nation are being killed before they have a chance to live because of toxicity levels. You see? Mm. So it's a problem because it's not being managed. It's not being controlled properly. If money is what we want, why don't you go to our agriculture? Agriculture is renewable. You can never finish the land in Ghana if mm. we do agriculture. and We will get the income. Cassava alone could give us the foreign exchange reserves. So what's the reason for you going after the gold? the diamond, the bauxite, which is finite. It's finite. If you don't use your head, mm. what happens when the gold and the diamond finishes? What are you going to do? Mm. So it's time to use a head. You need a leader who's going to use a head, right. not going after the diamond mm. and, the, and, the, and the lithium and whatever is down there. You understand what I'm saying? Use the human capital. The countries, the Scandinavian countries, they don't have anything. Du what does Dubai have? Uh, Sing what does ha Dubai has oil, but what does Singapore have? What does Singapore have? Singapore. But look, mm. but look at what how they have developed their land. Yeah. Exactly, because they do this, this. They use this they thing use here. Hairs. Yes, they use their hair. In the abundance of water, the full thirst. That's mm. not what Mali said? Mm. Mm. Yeah, man. Mm. Mm. So, If you were president of the country right now, the mm. country's messed up. I know. We have 10 Ghana cities to one single American dollar. There was a time it was one to one. Which in is fact, a false. A time when the Ghana city was even a little higher than the American 89, dollar. 89 to 1. Yes. Now tell me, 
if you were president at this point and the country was this messed up, would the IMF be a choice? No. If not, what would you do? It's simple. Mm. And I said the first five minutes I got here. Mm. The reason why we're in this situation, four factors. Mm. High uncontrolled debt. Mm -hmm. High inflation. Mm -hmm. We don't have any foreign exchange reserves. Mm. And we don't have any trade surpluses. Mm. That's it. That's why we're going to IMS 17 times. What, so, is, what is foreign exchange reserves? Explain that to okay. me. So, mm. uh, Black, what happens is we, as a nation, we have things that we need to be able to live our lives. Yes. So every nation goes to the world commodities market to barter. Mm -hmm. You know, this person, Switzerland takes their chocolates. Really? Mm -hmm. Take their chocolate. When we are producing the, go, uh, the cocoa, mm -hmm. they actually making billions from cocoa, right? Mm. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia takes the oil, mm -hmm. America takes technology, uh, China takes all sorts of things, manufacturing. When we go to the market, what do we go with? We don't go with anything. Why? Because we have clowns for leaders. Mm. What we should have been doing is to controlling our own gold, controlling our own cocoa, controlling our own oil, so we will have the everybody who wants to buy from us come to us to buy. When you come to buy from us, guess what you're going to give to us to buy? You're not going to trade the dollar. Mm. We are in our country. You give us our city. And by you giving us our city, our city gains value. Mm. Mm. From this, we go to the international market. They have set the market, the currency for the market, which is dollars. So when we go there, we need everything. Mm. Toothpick, toilet roll, mm. Mm. cassava, corn, mm. idiots. Mm. Mm. So when we go, they set the currency to be dollar. Mm. You don't have dollar. So guess what? Oh, let's squeeze our land of oil. Mm. Let's get the cocoa. Let's get the gold and the lithium. Let's give it to them so we can bring home cassava. Dumb. Okay, so that is the foreign exchange reserve. That's the foreign exchange reserve. So what happens is if we're going and we bring in cassava and corn and mm. everything to the foreign exchange market, we will sell it because people obviously want it. And then we will ask them for dollars. Right now, at least it's dollars. And then we will take the dollars and we'll come to Bank of Ghana and hoard the dollars there. Mm -hmm. So when we have to go and get anything, we have the dollars. That's the foreign exchange mm. reserve. Mm. You mm. see? But we don't do that. We don't even have anything to take to the market. Mm. So now when we go to the market, instead of us selling and them giving us dollars, we go and we beg. Come on, Black, help me. I'm glad that you hit it right on the nail. Now, this is going to be the follow-up question. Tell me, do you think a time would come when the Ghana city would be the eye or the focus of foreign exchange reserves? That's what we're here for, Black. Welcome to the new Ghana. How would you do it? By having value. You have any value right now? Mm. You don't produce your gold. Mm. You don't add value to your gold. Mm -hmm. you, your lithium is walking around... But begging for value mm -hmm, what, what do, even your own children your boys and girls you give them away on the Sahara and they die halfway mm, in the Mediterranean mm, what do you have to give mm, nothing mm. so till you give substance to value to your currency your land they're going to treat you like crap you are a shithole mm. come on say it again you are a shithole fire, the, fire, mind, fire, the mind fire, the mind the mind the mind will continue to be a shithole Listen, you go to any country, you look at their gutters and the environment and how people are dealing, you can tell by how their leaders think. Walk around, go to Circle. Dubai, right? They mm. call the Circle Dubai. The yeah. moment you get there, you know how their leaders think. Right. The center of every city tells you how their leaders think. Mm. Go to Trafalgar Square, Oxford Circus. Mm. Go to Times Square. Go to Wash DC. Right? Go to the, the uh, uh, Tiananmen Square. What do you see there? You see order. Mm. You see people living a life of substance. Mm. You see a government invested in their people mm. to be on top of the world. Mm. Go to Circle Dubai. Mm -hmm. You see neglect. Mm. They don't care about you. You are shithole just as much as they are shithole thinkers. Mm. That's what you get. Mm. Look at the roads. People are dying on the roads. Accra Kumasi Road, potholes. Every government comes. Mama comes. Akufara comes. Uh, 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 Kufor comes. Everybody comes. They bypass it. How could you do that to your people? 
it's unthinkable do you think any president in contemporary times in ghana lived up to a certain expectation absolutely not not Kufo. we are one of the richest nations in the world western region alone as a region could take care of could would be the 19th richest nation in the world black right, right. western region alone with mm -hmm. the resources mm -hmm. 19th richest nation look at this go when's the last time you went to western region drive from cape coast to takradi and you will be so you craters it's almost like they uh, the ukraine war was in Accra, uh, was in cape coast takradi hmm. they dropped the bomb so big on the road hmm. what what is going on where are the leaders and then we were 10 every 10 minutes where, 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 where. they drive around the suv because it, this guy drove around in uh uh, what's his name? Uh, Land Cruiser last mm. week. It's mm. like, man, now I know why they don't think because you can't feel anything. I said, you see, this is what happens. Drive around in an air conditioned a freaking uh, a, a Land Cruiser, it's like a moving morgue. Kofi Kurantin, what have you done for yourself so far? Elevate my thinking. Mm. That's the best thing you can do so you can serve your fellow man. Your rent in life is the service you give to mankind i want to serve my people mm. i have seen enough i have done enough the highlight of my life is to serve my people it, to, to emancipate us to make black people feel that we could do it black it's sad that you will sit here and talk all this big game black you got a big name mm. you've you got a huge reputation mm. black what are we going to do for our nation mm. Because if we don't, then all the goodness that was blessed unto you, it'd be nothing, Black. What have you achieved personally, Mr. Corantin? Well, aside from fighting to get uh, Ropa, which is a big feat, I've written a lot of programs uh, for Ghana in terms of expanding the tax net. Okay. Uh, we did a program to do um, uh, uh, Ghana Expo, Oil Expo here, so that at the, at the dawn of the uh oil explosion we wanted all the world companies that were in oil to commute here uh and it was under the ndc administration um they <laughs> it fizzled out they chopped our money the investors money and it never got to anything uh we also uh were the first people who actually did the uh real-time um toll systems for ghana i brought in a company from uh, Westchester, New York, uh, did the toll systems, uh, proposed uh, a seamless toll system where real income could be generated from tolls. Uh, it got thrown away, you see. Uh, so we've, we've made several attempts, but when you make attempts and they take pieces of what you are proposing and they do it themselves to make money, and they never want to call you to the table. There's always somebody wanted to exploit what you bring in so they can make money from it kind of it, it it you get to a point where you say you know what maybe you need to go and grab the bull by the horns and that's what we don't who sponsors you in this journey to the presidency hopefully you by the end of this program but the people you see around me mm. uh, the people that you've employed uh, oh you'd be surprised yeah uh you know they they sponsor me they uh the 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 people around the world who know but, that but we these guys around you don't look like they have a penny in their pockets but you don't have to have a penny you have to have a heart oh, okay so they support you with your heart and money too because what we're doing is expensive because these Last guys week, don't don't look like people who have money in their pockets yeah, but they don't look they don't have to look like they have money in their pocket my brother do you have money in your pocket <laughs> I see, I see some money here. Oh, I see, he got twenty. Yeah, he has one CD in his pocket. That's good. Oh, he has more money in his wallet. All right. I, I need money myself, yeah. so I'll keep I'm sure this. he has dollars in his pocket. Oh no, no, My far God. from it. Yeah, far from it. Uh, oh, uh, uh, that's hey. it. He, yes, he's holding an American hey. dollar. Hey, wow, cool. and he has a check. His dollar account. You see, he has a dollar account. You see, the people following you don't even believe in the Ghanaian CD anymore. Well, we you see, but this is one thing. Um, it's not that you don't believe, mm. but if you want to preserve your money, then everybody has an excuse to preserve their money, Black, because it only makes sense. Uh, how 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 best for you to take care of your family if you have a month if you have a currency that's weathering away every minute mm -hmm. it's sad mm. but you see the sad also thing to recognize is 
the damage has already been done. Mm. What we're seeing is the reverberation of the problem that happened six years ago when this these guys should have seen that it was a problem mm. uh, because they didn't they were clowns all along like i said they've been a deception this has been the biggest ponzi scheme mm. that they laid on Ghanaians, and mm. we bought it mm. we bought into baumier's magic uh, that he didn't have anything and it's evident this is not me saying it this mm. is not you saying it the, 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 what, what do we have? Have you heard of Nam One before? This is the penultimate question I'm yeah, asking. Yeah, you. of course I. What do you think about Nam One? Well, he took advantage of a broken system. Mm. The Securities and Exchange Commission and the Bank of Ghana should have set regulatory, the same regulatory platform they should have set so that they wouldn't have to use that as an excuse to spend 25 billion cities to, ref to fix, to demolish. They decimated our banking system with 25 billion cities when they could have reformed it with 9 billion cities. Who does that? Tell me. Who does that? So they caused the banking system to metastasize, to be cancerous. Mm. And then they came back with 25 billion cities to decimate it mm. at the cost to us mm. so that it gave prevalence to uh, the... Um, uh, 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 um, uh, Momo and then they came back and said oh since Momo is making money from the system which we should have created Bank of Ghana should have created the payment aggregator that mm. Momo created but mm. they didn't have the f vision to do it right so Momo saw that these guys are not smart let's go in and create a Momo system and take money represent the people who are unbanked when you say unbanked mm -hmm. it's the people who don't have what it takes to go to bank people in the informal sector so Momo created the system and bank, uh, the Ghana government sees that, oh man, these guys are making so much money. So instead of them lazy government to go in to duplicate what Momo has done and take the whole shebang from them, they go and say, okay, we'll allow you to do what you're doing, but then we'll take a fraction of what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. As You see? Mm -hmm. But this is the lazy government. You see? So Nam One saw that and took advantage of it, set up a Ponzi scheme. Oh, it was a Ponzi scheme. Of course it was a Ponzi scheme. Okay. You know mm. how many people have died from that? Where are the people? Mm. I mean, who, who takes 100 cities and five folds it in three months? Mm. You can't go from 100 to 500 cities mm. in three months. Oh, that was what he was doing? Yeah, okay. apparently. I had people who were my clients who wanted to go invest money with Nam One. I said, listen, I don't know about this guy. And I'll never say put your money into somebody who real money comes from hard work not from the clouds what's your specialty you are just talking about clients uh no i'm in investment banking investment banking all right so coffee quarantine is my guest we are winding up i want to thank you so much for coming i appreciate you and my listeners are so impressed with you i have some comments coming in this one is from desmond and he says black your guest in the studio coffee quarantine is serious and will be better than our president and akufuado and his ministers Plus all the MPs from both uh, major political parties. Why am I saying this? Our politicians see Americans and British. Uh, they see the American and British citizenship as uh, the visa to heaven. But for him to denounce his American citizenship, to come to Ghana to help Ghanaians from this wicked criminal politicians, I think that he's the one we should be thinking about. And I agree with him. The National Cathedral is not a priority. Well, it looks like you are building a great fan base around you. Because Many more. everything yeah. I talk about black is mm -hmm. common sense. Mm. It's not that I'm special. I know more than anybody else. It's just common sense. That's right. That's all. Well, um, Dana Kwame J on Twitter says, Ha! This interview, it did go on rough. Ah! I love this man. Woo! Mighty Don Duvasti, the Mad Kuchoko engineer, said, I want to serve my people. I am here to serve my people. This is what they all come and say when they importantly need power. Give them power, and it's the opposite. Do you want to react to this? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Black, mm -hmm. I'm the only person who wants to serve his nation who have said that I am going to strip the presidency of all exemptions. Mm. Nobody has said that. So if they, I want our, our listeners to listen carefully and know that nobody have said that they are going to cut down ministers from 123 to, or whatever to right. 20. Right. Cut, cut out regional ministers. 
Nobody said that. Nobody said they're going to cut 275 parliamentarians to mm-hmm. 20. Mm-hmm. The cuts that we are bringing, nobody have said that they're going to cut, or nobody can say they're going to cut, the, uh, uh, they're going to change the constitution. Because it's those things that serve them. Mm-hmm. It serves their presidency. They come here to serve their political parties. I mm-hmm. am not here to serve a political party. I am here as a steward of the people to serve Ghanaians. How are you going to get your ministers and your parliamentarians? It looks like you don't have a political party, do you? You don't have to have a political party to have uh, uh, parliamentarians. Okay. We have currently we have over 120 people who are going to vie for parliamentarians, oh, independent wow. parliamentarians. Mm. And once we start the campaign next year, it's going to bump up. But you need money. How are you going to get this money? Well, whoever is running is going to come with their own money. You see, so you're going to you are, you are going to come with your own money. Who? Me, me? Yes. Of, well, we have already come with our money since 2019. But we are being sponsored by a lot of people who believe in what we're doing. And you see, Black, the magic is when the people you have to serve buy into the vision of oneself mm-hmm. teaching another person. Right. Then you don't need so much money because w- the traditional way of doing politics has been pay somebody to vote for you. Mm-hmm. But freedom is not free. That's true. And when people understand that they are responsible for their freedom, you don't need to pay them for them to vote for you. Mm. That's where the difference comes. Mm. So we're going down to the villages and talking to people. Yes, you have to buy the Coca-Cola, the water, the meat pie for them to. Some of them are so hungry they can't even think. You see? So when you go and speak to them, you have to buy the meat pie and, and uh, malt and, and so at least they can think. And then they will listen to you and ask you questions. And they believe you because they know you're different. Because I tell them the truth. Everywhere I go, I've told all my people and they all know. They all like me. They tell the truth that, listen, we don't have the monies to put 50 CDs in matchboxes and give you Wellington boots and cutlasses and croports and uh, muggy cubes and stuff like that for us to vote. This is your life. You see the roads? You don't have schools. You don't have any infrastructure. Look at you. Do you want to continue this way? There is a reason why these guys have not helped you in the last 30 years. Because all the monies they should have gone into development, they gave to you bef- to get you to vote for them. If that is what you want, then... Are you, are you under pressure to give people money, knowing what Ghana is? Oh, oh of, uh, of course. People are calling you to give them money. Oh, absolutely, every day. But it, sometimes it's genuinely out of lack. Your guy is laughing. Because, because he gets know, the calls. Yeah. He's mm. my PA and he mm. gets the calls all the time. Uh, people, uh, they, they want jobs. They want food. They went to a hospital. I have a group that got into an accident last night. They need to get money for the hospital. And, you know, these are things. You wake up in the morning, people lined up. Uh, oh, me ma, me yari. Oh, me nye Oh, wow. Uh, oh, me nye ye. Every weekend, me nye ye. They come to your oh, house. Oh, are you kidding me? Everywhere you go, they, uh, hopefully they're not lined up downstairs. Where's uh, your house so that uh, like we would arrange... Question. Uh, but don't come. <laughs> <laughs> if you see black in my neighborhood, tell them I moved out, please. Uh, yeah. So uh, we no, but it's a reality. But yeah. sometimes you mm-hmm. have to black. These are genuine people. Mm-hmm. It's not a rip off. Yeah. They need the help. Some mm-hmm. of them don't have food to eat. Do you give them? When you have, you do. When you have, you do. I told them the last yesterday we had a conversation. I told them we can't keep doing this because I, I listen. The gobe that I used to eat twice a day mm. now is two once a day. One and a half maybe. No, no, no. Once. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's tough. I'm telling you, it's not easy. You got to come down, but there's only so far that you could go to have meaning because then you wither out and then you're not able to help the people. So we all need to tighten up. And please, uh, for everybody who's watching, who's listening, don't be calling me, you need money. I know you need money. That's why we're doing this. We're doing this for you. But we have to go through the valley of shadow of death first Mm. before we come to the mountaintop Mm. where we're going to realize that this is a new Ghana. Mm. This is a Ghana that serves you. Mm. Mm. You know? 
have you had um, pastors and prophets calling you to come so they will anoint you and pray uh, for you? Oh, man. Black. How do you know? Are uh, you? Okay. You, I'm a okay. Ghanaian. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Black. They want me to go take a bath in the seven seas of Nazareth. And, wow. Oh, come on. You would not believe it. I mean, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> every day there are every day there are people tell me we got to go take you to go see. Uh, I said no, no. And some have called you to tell you they've seen t- visions oh, every, about you. When I get on my phone, I'll be able to play messages for you. Hey, yeah, wait, me see a ba, a ba to seka kai kufi me see. What's your other Fire, fire, fire! man. Do hey. you believe them? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> what I always tell my aides and my people, I say, "Wait, more power. I'm on quite arrest this city. I'm not messing with mobile base arrest, arrest. I'm on quite arrest this city. But who me ane here? I'm on me. Oh my God, have mercy! I'm telling you, man. Have you gone to see Sheikh Sharabutu yet? We went to see him in 2020. Mm. We will go back and see him again. Okay, I yeah. asked because you are a Christian and I just wanted to find out your level of tolerance in Absolutely. terms of religion. Oh, are you kidding me? No, but it's you have people. proven it. I mean, it's you've people. proven it. It's a people. Mm. I love the people. Mm. I think uh, people of the north have been taken advantage of. We need to change this thing. Listen, one of the things that's my passion is to ban Kayaye from day one. The moment we sworn in, the first thing I would say is from this point on, there's no Kayaye. And uh, wh- what are you going to do for the Kayaye? We're going to pay them. Oh, we're wow. going to pay them. We're going to listen. Let me tell you one of the big reasons in the north. We have rice, we have beans, we have all the grains, atoko and all the They don't have destoning machines to add value. Black is a serious thing. How much does a destoning machine cost? One SUV, one Land Cruiser costs $120,000. You know how many destoning machines you could get? 10. Mm. Why don't you put 10 in every region you do 10? Every, re- every sector you put 10, not even every region, mm. and let the girls have m- uh, something to... Listen, you, some of them send five CDs to their parents mm, mm, every mm. week. Mm. That should make you cry. Mm, 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 Come mm, on, what mm. are we, animals? Mm. You're going to have somebody's 12-year-old. I have a little girl, four-year-old, going on four. I treasure her. Mm. When I see this, it breaks my yeah, heart. Yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And you have somebody, 12-year-old, carrying... 50 pounds. Mm. The other day, he tried to carry, uh, we're helping somebody to carry something. He almost broke his back. Mm. Mm. The, the loads they carry, and people don't have any consideration. They give them these loads. It should be banned. And then NDC comes and buys them a pen. Mm. And then MPP comes and says, oh, we're going to not pay, you're not paying taxes on your pen. Mm. Are you sick? Mm. These guys are sick. Mm. 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 And we have, the, we, we allow for these guys to be called leaders. Mm. Mm. There's something wrong with us who mm. allow them to be take advantage of us and exploit us like that. Why is, this not, why is this not happening in America? Because people still buy things and nobody seems to carry them to their cars and all those places. It's an acceptance. This is society accepts things. And plus, it's child labor and it should be legal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. If you buy stuff, you pay for somebody professionally to take it to your car. Mm. You know? Mm. And plus, they have the infrastructure for you to... When I go to the store for the supermarket, I bring my cart. Mm. Where are you going to carry a cart in this pothole? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the, the, the things they do in the West and the rest of the world is to support their way of life. Mm. What do we do to support our way of life? Mm. We always copy. Mm. Ghana is the garbage center of mm. the world. Mm. Everything secondhand they bring to Ghana. Mm. The things that the West should be throwing away at a cost, mm. they sell it to us for a profit. That's Think true. Think about it. I'm going to end on this. But um, do you have the blessing of your mother for the presidency? What is she saying? Uh, my mother, she's of age now. Mm. Uh, when I call her and talk to her, you know, she doesn't have much to say. Mm. I mean, my sisters tell her, oh, Kufi. Yeah, president, so you could feed it. You, I mean, I mean, that's she said. My mm. pap, my pops died last year, mm. Mm. so my dad, I know if he were alive, he would be my biggest supporter. Wow, yeah, because they know I'll be able to deliver. Everybody in my family knows that if this guy wants to be president and serve his people. Uh, he's going to do it. Everybody who's worked with me knows my work ethic and knows I'm a no-nonsense person. You know, some people say, oh, Kufi's going to be uh, hard-headed. Uh, yeah. But listen, with the kind of 
people that we have in Ghana, you have to be tough. Yeah, you have to be tough. That's you know? true. And, yeah. and it's not being tough to be able to bulldoze people around. But we, we need order mm. to protect the good people. Mm. Mm. If you're a good person, you need to understand that order has to be an effect For with real. zero tolerance. And that's who I am. Thank you so much, Kofi. If you have any final words to share with the listeners, millions out there watching and listening online and also the whole of Accra and beyond. Easy, easy. Well, Black, <laughs> I must say, thank you so much for uh, being the leader that you are. I've hmm. listened to you. I know where your heart is. Uh, and I know uh, you are the earth. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you are the earth, so you pr you are a big provider in terms of wisdom mm. and knowledge, and we love you for that. And I feel Thank like you. I'm real, I'm I'm home when mm. I come here and I speak to you because I know you understand me, and I know you had to play the devil's advocate and asking these questions, but I know where your heart is, no doubt. Uh, because I know what you stand for. So we want to thank you for the opportunity to come here. My pleasure. And with your beautiful staff, with mm. Laura and everybody else mm. behind the boards. Um, and to everybody else in uh, media land, uh, we want to tell you this is the time. Ghana has one last chance. 2024, we don't take Ghana back from uh, uh, NDC and PP. They're going to collapse the country to a point where we won't be able to do anything. Mm. We're asking for all our brothers and sisters around the world uh, to come home. If you're not able to come home, come home with your money and resource. We need the money. Uh, let me be blunt. We need the money because the people in the villages, uh, we need to go to them and see them and talk to them and get them to understand where we're coming from and also understand their positions. And it costs a lot of money to take on this endeavor. So please help us. www.kufikuranting.com kufikuranting.com and the uh, cell phone, uh, the Momo number is uh, 026 uh, 026 uh, 625 4687 02, oh, I'm sorry, 024 625 4687 024 625 4687 Momo number and KufiKranton.com, there's a donate uh, button there that you could donate and also help us join us on WhatsApp WhatsApp is 059-999-5120. 059-999-5120. Join up on WhatsApp and let's get this conversation going. This is your life. We have passed politics. We are an endangered species. We have the last chance to get this thing right. Let's get it right, Ghana. This is our moment. We thank Black for giving us this platform. We know this is a huge platform. Get it, push it out to your neighbor and let them know this is it. This is the last stop. We have one last chance. 2024, we don't get it right. It's over. Black, we love you, baby. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Easy. Okay, so I want to play you in a reggae song of your choice. Which one do you want? Boy, uh, <laughs> this will go to Bar Barrington Levy, you know. Barrington Levy, which of his songs? Oh man, uh, brought it on Broadway. Ah, brought yeah, it on last. Broadway. No yes, way. Yes, easy, easy, <laughs> easy. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my yes. God. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, old time, you know. Old time. Yes, yes, yes. Old time. All nations. You in love London. the dance style, right? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you know, I'm a bad boy, you know. Easy. All right, easy. so here we go. My yes. name's Black Rasta. Yes, 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 yes. Easy. easy.